today, I'm gonna explain why. Why I chose Berkeley over MIT. <laughs> Bro, when I posted this on my Facebook feed, dude, people were so heckin' confused. People were literally messaging me, why the heck would you choose Berkeley over MIT? And I mean, honestly, it's understandable, like, all the, like, really good math, CS, physics, Olympiad guys I know, they all went to MIT or Harvard. Like, literally, the two CS campers I knew went to MIT, like, the IMO gold medalist I know went to MIT, like, William Lin went to MIT. <laughs> There's so many people who went to MIT that did these Olympiads, but... For me, surprisingly, the decision to choose Berkeley over MIT was not actually that hard, okay? Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today I'm going to be talking about all the factors that came into play when I was deciding between Berkeley Eeks and MIT. So basically first I'll talk about where I applied so you guys know what I was deciding between, and then I'll talk about like what I made my decision based off of, and then I'll talk about each category in depth, okay? So that's how it's going to go. But before I get into the video, if you guys like the content, please leave a like and subscribe, okay? Smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, and smash the hot little notification bell right next to it, okay? It helps me out a ton, and it gives me the motivation I need to make these epic videos, okay? Okay, I don't know if they're epic, okay? You guys gotta tell me whether they're epic by liking the video, okay? Please, I beg. But anyways, with that out of the way, let us get into the video. So first, where I applied, I basically applied to three main places. So obviously the first thing I applied to was MIT, right? <laughs> Early action, uh, the deadline was November 1st, so that was basically the first thing I had to submit. And then I kind of applied to UT Austin as a safety at the same time, early action, November 1st, all that good stuff. So basically once I submit those, those only come out in like December, December 25th. And the UC deadline comes out way before that happens, right? Like the UC deadline to submit your app is November 30th. So I also submitted my UC app and honestly speaking, going into college apps, like I was, the two main ones that I really wanted to go to, like I didn't really know which one were Berkeley and MIT. My main reasoning for that was just like <laughs> MIT and Berkeley, both like top of the line CS schools. Berkeley is the public, best public school for CS, and MIT is probably like the best um, private school for CS. Well, it's basically the best private school for all types of engineering, not just CS. And then after I applied to UCs, MIT came out just at the right time, dude, December 25th at 3.14 p.m., just because they gotta get the pie in there. It was epic, okay? The reason why it was such epic timing is because the deadline for all regular decision schools is January. So like the first week of January. So because I got into MIT, I didn't actually have to apply anywhere else. Dude, writing college essays is so cancer, okay? If you think that you're gonna like write essays if you don't need to, you're wrong, okay? So as soon as I got MIT, I was just like, nope, I'm not writing those nonsenses, let us move on. And then finally, UCs came out pretty recently. I got into all of them except Irvine, which waitlisted me very nice. <laughs> So yeah, that's basically what I got. I basically got into the two schools that I was, like, tr trying to decide between. Dude, honestly, between December 25th and when UCs came out, I was like, please don't make me decide between Berkeley and MIT. I don't want to make such hard decisions. But sadly, it was not to be, so that's why I get to make this epic video. Alright, so now let's talk about the actual reasoning why I chose Berkeley over MIT, right? So before I get into the, like, specific categories, like, the first thing I wanted to state is just, like, I, I believe that the person matters a lot more than the college, okay? Like, I know that's cliche, but, like, obviously, like, better colleges are going to give you more resources, all that good stuff, but if the colleges are approximately the same, like, if you're a good person, you could succeed in either college, right? Like, I know a ton of really epic people in Berkeley, I know a ton of epic people in MIT, and I know, like, a ton of not epic people at MIT, and I know a ton of not epic people at Berkeley, right? So, wh which college you go to doesn't really tell you what, like, how, how much stuff you do, or, like, how well you do things, right? Like, if I go to Berkeley, and I'm lazy as heck, I'm not going to be like, Oh, just because I didn't go to MIT, that's why I'm not doing anything. That, that's totally the reason. That totally makes very logical sense. So, so basically, as long as MIT and Berkeley are approximately the same, I honestly don't really care, right? Like, ultimately, all the responsibility for how well I do in the future is going to fall on me, okay? It's not going to fall on Berkeley. I can't blame it on Berkeley. I can't blame it on MIT, okay? So with that in mind, let us now talk about the individual categories. Let's do it. So first, we got quality of education, and I think for this one, MIT is a slight winner. It's not, it's not that big of a difference, but obviously MIT on all the rankings is slightly higher than Berkeley. But my main major, right, like the major that I for sure want to take at both of them is EECS, right? So, <laughs> like, MIT and Berkeley are both ranked number one, so I don't really, like, have a preference between the two for that. I do also want a double major. I was planning on double majoring in Mechie because I think robotics is heckin' cool. <laughs> Boston Dynamics is doing such cool stuff. I kind of want to learn that kind of stuff, like manufacturing and all that. So Mechie might be cool. And obviously MIT is like ranked slightly higher than Berkeley and all the other engineering. But like the difference, in my opinion, is small enough that it, it really doesn't matter that much. Like from the courses I took at Berkeley, the quality of the courses is plenty fine. People I asked between MIT and Berkeley, both of them said that you, you won't be getting that much of a difference of education necessarily if you go to the different schools. Okay, so basically quality of education is inconclusive, right? There's not a really big major difference between it. If everything else was equal, then I'd probably just choose MIT, but like the the 
amount that it leads by is very small. Okay, research! Research is pretty important for me because if you guys don't know, I'm a very STEM oriented guy, okay? I wanna like learn new stuff, I wanna like find new stuff out. That's what research is, and it's like what all the like STEM people do. So people basically say that it's a lot easier to get research at MIT, right? Because I mean it's just common sense, right? Like if you have the same amount of professors and a lot less students, obviously it's, you're gonna have more access to the professors. But like in either college, if you're good enough and you get to know your professors, like you're gonna find research either way. Like my brother, when he was looking for research, he just found a professor that he was interested in, he talked to her and he, he got the research. It's not like he had to like, like spam a bunch of professors before he got research or anything. And just for context, my brother does go to Berkeley, so I do have a little bit of context when it comes to like what, what goes on in Berkeley and how easy it is to get research and all that kind of stuff. So, so obviously I understand that it's gonna be a little bit harder to get research at Berkeley, but come on. Why would I back down from a challenge, guys? You got, you guys got to take it, take with, take with a grain of salt. No, that's not how the saying goes. <laughs> I don't know. How do you say it? You got to beat up the challenge. That's how it goes. That's totally a saying, <laughs> bro. In terms of the quality of the research, both are top notch. Okay, <laughs> like Berkeley literally has parking spots for Nobel laureates, dude. And like Jennifer Duna, the person who like invented CRISPR, basically got Nobel Prize this year, and she, she did research at Berkeley. Okay, so honestly, like research in both of the programs are going to be like approximately equal. And of course, there's like a spectrum of research, right? So you get really good research at Berkeley, you get really bad, you get really good at MIT, you get really bad at MIT too. So like, as long as you get what you're interested in, you should be chilling. Like literally my brother's professor that he's working with right now was a MIT grad that came to Berkeley to do research, right? So <laughs> I mean, like if, if people from MIT are coming to Berkeley to do research, I'm sure there's people going from Berkeley to MIT to do research, but there must be like not that big of a difference between the two. Okay, now we talk about culture. So I think culture is pretty important to me, right? Like obviously if you're surrounded by people who like are really good at things and like are interested in helping, then obviously like you're gonna be motivated to do that as well, right? Like that's why it's good to have communities whenever you want to like get better at something. Like if you're trying to get better at Olympiads, you probably want to surround yourself with other people who also want to get better at Olympiads. So when I talked to MIT grads, like a lot of them basically told me like the culture at MIT is really, really good. And and that makes sense, right? Because I, I would say that the average MIT person is probably better than the average Berkeley person because like I think the, ma the most elective major at Berkeley is EECS, right? So I think if you look at Berkeley as a whole, as a whole, the average is probably not as good as the average MIT student. But really, do averages actually matter, dude? Like, come on. Like, just because there's some people who are like not like interested in the same stuff as you or like are are not gonna help you get motivated, doesn't mean that there don't exist people that are like top notch and that you can work with, right? So basically, my thought process was like, if I can find good people to work with at either place, I'll do fine, right? Like, the whole point is that. As long as you work with the right people, you, you should get the same motivation. Like, I currently go to a public school, right? So it's not like you need to go to a private school in order to find, like, better people. There are a ton of really good math guys at my school, even though it's a public school, right? Obviously, the average at my school is probably not as good as the average of, like, a private school like Harker. But still, there are people to work with, and that's what motivates me to do better. So if we apply the same reasoning to Berkeley versus MIT, I honestly don't think that the culture is going to be too much different as long as I'm proactive and trying to find like good people to work with. All right, so the next category is coursework, okay? And like you guys probably know that I've taken four Berkeley courses already and I got decent grades in them. So that's four classes I don't have to take if I go to Berkeley. Uh, I honestly don't know how transferring credits would work. Maybe there's a way that if I went to MIT, I'd be able to transfer credits, but obviously me taking four Berkeley classes is for sure going to translate to four classes taken at Berkeley. Also, another benefit is less humanities requirements, okay? I don't need to take like five years of English, no kidding. I don't know the exact numbers, but like, it's less, okay? Less humanities is better. Okay, I'm kidding. I got nothing against humanities, except I'm just not that interested in them, okay? There's nothing wrong with them. Just, just don't make me take them, okay? Now, I think the main difference between MIT and Berkeley in terms of coursework is that, like, MIT has way more classes, right? Like, I think the idea is they have smaller class sizes, so their professors are willing to teach, like, more like specific courses and also you could like dual enroll at harvard you could dual enroll with uh, like wellesley or something someone someone told me something like that but basically there's a ton more course selection at mit but when i was looking through the courses for both of them i honestly found like plenty of interesting courses at berkeley there are plenty of interesting uh courses at mit too but i don't think i'm too worried about the course selection they're they're good courses at both of them all right so that's basically it for the main like academic reasons why i chose like was trying to decide between berkeley and mit and honestly speaking like, MIT is slightly higher in most of those categories, but, like, it, it's not significant, okay? Like, I think the only thing that MIT is, like, slightly better in is, like, rankings, and <laughs> rankings are pretty arbitrary, so I'm not too worried about that either. Alright, so now we're going to talk about more of the, like, 
like side effects of the universities, right? So first off, location, right? Like Berkeley is in the center of Silicon Valley, right? You you have access to all kinds of startups. You have access to all kinds of companies. Like internships are a lot easier in Silicon Valley. Like basically, MIT students sometimes come to the Bay Area just to do internships, right? So like, why not just be in the Bay Area in the first place? And also, come on, Massachusetts weather, dude, <laughs> bro, dude, I went there once for UMass, dude, and the summer was so heckin' hot, dude, I was, like, sweating, it, it was, like, 104 degrees, it was so bad. <laughs> oh, that's hot, that's hot. And I haven't even tried winter in Massachusetts, dude, I, I heard that the snow is horrible. But honestly, I don't really care too much about the weather, but <laughs> you might as well have a nice, chill temperatures like always in California, okay? California weather is epic, I'm not gonna lie. I, I have no complaints about California weather. Okay, and now for the biggest difference between the two. Like, honestly, this, like, cost should not be a determining factor when you're deciding between colleges, but I think it's the only tangible, guaranteed, and very, very big difference between MIT and Berkeley, okay? Like, literally, Berkeley costs 53k for tuition, right? So that's basically 53k a year. And then Berkeley costs 14k. <laughs> so basically each year you're saving 40k, right? So that's 40k times 4. So that's 160k. Just to put that in perspective, I could literally buy three Model 3 Teslas with that money, okay? With just the money I saved from going to Berkeley over MIT. And then the last thing obviously is name brand. Obviously MIT is more prestigious, right? Like it shows up earlier in all the rankings, but Berkeley Eeks is like equally considered by companies, okay? Like, if you say that you got a 4.0 in Berkeley Eeks, that's, like, just as impressive as getting a 5.0 at MIT, right? Because MIT does, like, out of 5.0s, but getting a, like, perfect GPA at Berkeley is just as good as getting a perfect GPA at MIT. The name brand honestly doesn't matter that much, except, like, bragging to your friends. So, yeah, basically not because I had anything against MIT, per se, but it, it just, I couldn't, like, think of a compelling reason to go to MIT, right? Like, I, had, I saw no reason to pay, like, an extra 40k, like give up Silicon Valley, like, go to bad weather, ju just to get, like, I don't know, a potential better ranking or, like, I don't know, potentially easier research, right? Like, I, I, didn't, I just didn't see a good reason for it. But that is all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. If you guys have any suggestions for what videos you guys want in the future, please comment them down below. It would be very epic. And, of course, if you guys are interested, click on the videos up here. But other than that, we are done for today, so thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time!